Kentucky-born writer, producer, comedian, jack of all trades, Stevie Dupin is joining us right now. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You said jack of all trades. Yeah, Master I did. of I one or know. two. One or two. Let's go with one or two. Because he describes himself as a hillbilly hell raiser. <laughs> you want to That's describe right. what that means? That's about right. Well, I grew up in Owensboro, Kentucky, not far from here. And by the way, can I first start off by saying I was supposed to go to WKU. I never showed up, so... Sorry I'm a little late for class, but glad to be here. Well, we're happy to have you well, here, but you. you've had an interesting life in between. Talk a little bit about that and how it's influenced you to, to write the book, The Trans Am Diaries. Well, from Owensboro, I went down to Panama City and I did some DJing and you know hosted all the wild spring break stuff. And of course, I covered my eyes when the girls would you know flash. Of course. Of course I did that. But uh, I always dreamed of going to Hollywood since I was five years old. And I'd look around Owensboro and I'd see my mom working in a factory. and. I'd say, Mom, I want to be on TV, and she'd say, I think you're eating too many paint chips, kid. But So in 88, I put two suitcases in a car and an Elvis King Creole movie poster, and I went to Hollywood. So I struggled for a number of years, you know, five years or so, and thought maybe I should have gone to WKU and gotten a little <laughs> education first. But um, it all worked out. You know, got into fitness and started doing fitness videos, and then I wanted to showcase I can show my, my dancing and singing and being crazy. So I started doing stand-up comedy. And I did that for, still doing it, for about 15 years. And it's been quite uh, fruitful for you. But in the interim, you know, life kind of throws you those curveballs, if you want to use that baseball analogy. Absolutely. But you had a bout with cancer, and you kind of use that. And anyone who's been touched like that or by cancer knows, you know, just how extreme it can be. But you found a way to find humor in it and, and make others find that as well. Yeah, when it first happened, I was shocked because I didn't know anything about prostate cancer. And a lot of people, especially men, don't want to talk about prostate cancer. And you were young cancer. to yeah. have been diagnosed yes. with that. And uh, so I went in, I was in fitness. I've been working out for 25 years. I have an organic garden. Uh, so for whatever reason, whatever you know, the powers that be, whether it be environmentally or whatever caused the cancer, I'll never know. But I had two little ones, I had a baby, had a two-year-old, um, but two years prior to being diagnosed, I'd gone in suspecting something was going on. And because of my age, they didn't do a PSA. They just said, oh, you're drinking too much water, or you know, you're going to the bathroom a lot because you know, you're drinking water. I said, okay. Um, but two years later, I got a blood test and I did have cancer. And they said, that's what it was when you suspected something. But I tell people the silver lining was, in that two years, my daughter was born, whose name happens to be Faith. Aww. And uh, so if they would have discovered it the first time, the shop would be closed and I wouldn't have my daughter. So all is forgiven for, for the light. first doctor that didn't do the PSA, all is forgiven. Yes, there you go. Yeah. But you know, and, and what a beautiful way to look at that because what, what could have been just a really ugly place turned into a really nice place to yeah, visit. Thank you, yeah. And the sense of humor. Because, you know, a little while ago in one of the other shows from outside the book here, we were talking with an author who, who talks about animals, and she interviewed a researcher who found that rats laugh. Mm -hmm. oh, He's cool. doing research on laughing rats. That having been said, does that not speak to the importance of humor? That is. I think laughter heals, and uh, that's one way I definitely dealt with it. Writing the book was my therapy. Um, I've been working as a comic for so long, I had to be in constant motion. Uh, so while my body was healing, you know, I made my brain work, and it had been a while since it worked. But uh, so I took about two years and, and wrote the book and tried to deal with it, you know, with humor. And I say it's not a cancer book. It's stories of my hell-raising days and hanging out with rock stars. And, you know, I just weave the cancer through the book to keep it kind of light. Now, you know, humor is a, that's a tough one because what I find funny, you may not find funny, but then when you're, you know, talking to an audience of 500 people and you have to make them laugh, mm -hmm. You've got to get to that common place. How mm -hmm. do you do that? Well, I think people go to comedy clubs. You go to see a comedian to laugh at someone else's pain. You know, if someone's overweight, they say, I can't get a date. You feel better about yourself. But Richard Pryor said the best comedy comes from pain. It comes from honesty. So if you're able to laugh at yourself, then other people will laugh with you. You know, um, and if people are criticizing you, if you can laugh about whatever they're criticizing about, it takes away their power. That's true. And you know, with the, we talk a lot in this show, certainly, and at these book festivals, about how uh, technology has changed so much mm -hmm. of everything that we do. Has that affected the way people consume humor? Absolutely. Actually, I was just talking to someone over there about that, because I hosted an internet talk show myself, 
the CVD show, ActorsEntertainment.com. Sorry for the plug, but, but I was just talking about that because I have a lot of comics on and we talk about how it's different now. We could be working on a bit, working on material, and it's still rusty in the you know, early stages, but someone would take their cell phone and upload that piece. And it could be something taken out of context. Mm -hmm. It could be a bit that you're working on that's not polished yet. Uh, so it's definitely a new world out there, and you got to be a little bit more prepared when you hit the stage. With You can't just go up there and go, oh, I went to the dentist today, and oh, I think you forgot the Novocaine, and sorry if I'm drool, you know, whatever it is. You got to be a little more polished, a little more on your game than you used to, used to be. So what's up for you? You have the show, you, you've written a book, and what's next? Well, uh, for about the last three or four years also, I had something called Rockstars of Comedy that came out. And we signed Tommy Lee to host that. It was a DVD concert film with uh, Whitney Cummings from the show Whitney and Steve Burns from Sullivan and Son. A lot of my friends. A little name drop in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But it's, and it helped sell, it, you know. Sure. And I definitely use my friends that have a huge fan base and we work together and I wanted to have a crossover audience. So we're shopping that as a television show. I have other reality shows uh, that I create and I've got like seven projects now. So we'll see what sticks. We'll see what yeah, sticks. Exactly. It's been a pleasure chatting Thank with you. Thank you for having me. You Kentucky boy. It's you. good to be back in Bowling Green. Good to have you Thank here. You. We've been talking with author Stevie Dupin.